Good morning and welcome to this abacus tutorial which we are going to model this infinite array of collinear cracks that is subjected to a remote tension at the top and bottom surface as we can see in this figure. This remote tension for the purpose of this example is going to be 1 megapascal and due to the multiple symmetries in this example we are going to only model this subdomain that has a symmetry in the x-axis and it has two symmetries in the y axis as we can see here in this figure. Uh, those are going to be later uh, shown in the abacus mesh. Then the crack size for this one is going to be 50 millimeters. The width of this specimen is going to be 100 millimeters and the height is going to be 300 millimeters for this example. So I'm going to have this folder that is going to be called infinite array of collinear cracks and that's going to be my working directory in which all the abacus files are going to be saved during runtime. So that's where we are going to have all the files later to access. So I'm just going to go ahead and set the work directory here in abacus. I'm going to search for that folder and it's going to be in my desktop under the tutorial and it's going to be the infinite array of cracks. I'm just going to select OK and that's going to be now my working directory for this simulation. I'm going to rename the model and for the purpose of this tutorial I'm just going to call it infinite array of cracks. The first thing that I'm going to do is to create a part. I'm going to call that part an edge crack plate because of the symmetry conditions that we define. That's how the model is going to look like and this approximate size is how big or how small is going to be my model so as my height was 300 I'm just going to put 500 just because and deformable and as a shell element so I'm just going to hit continue and now this is where I'm going to start creating uh, my part based on the geometrical definitions so I'm going to create a rectangle the first thing that I'm going to select is my initial point of the rectangle and then I'm just going to select the opposite or end point of the rectangle but I prefer to type the coordinates of that point so it's going to be 100 and 300. Recall the uh, dimensions that I specified here in the beginning of the abacus tutorial. So that's going to be my part. I just select exit and done and now this is going to be my edge crack plate. In order to define the crack later in the abacus simulation, I'm going to have to create some partitions in this part that are going to help me to define the crack in the model. So I'm just going to go here to the midpoint of this lower edge and I'm going to create these radial regions which are going to be for the collapse element because we need to define some special crack tip elements. Crack tip elements this is like a transition zone because this zone is going to have a higher mesh resolution than the rest of the part and I just divide that in the y direction as well so those are my partitions that I define in order to create the crack I'm going to have to create a material so I'm just going to call that material material and delete the dash and the one and it's going to have a material that is going to have elastic properties and the young modulus is going to be 200 gigapascals. So my base units for these models are going to be megapascals. So that means that gigapascals is megapascals to the power of 3. 10 to the, 10 to the 3. And then the puzzle ratio for this example is going to be 0.3. I'm going to have to create a section and that section it's going to have a material associated to it. So it's going to be a homogeneous section and the material that is going to be assigned to it is going to be the material that we just created before. I'm going to assign that section to the part. So I'm just going to select all the parts and I'm going to click done and I, I'm going to specify what is the section that I'm going to assign to that part which is the section one that we just defined just a few seconds ago we can see that the part is now green which means that it has a material associated to it then following the steps here in the 
tree that we have to the left, I have to create an instance inside assembly. So we can have multiple paths in the assembly or for the purpose of this tutorial, we only are gonna have one part in the assembly. So I'm just gonna double click instances and we are gonna call the edge product plate part and the is gonna be independent. So the, the mesh is gonna be in the instance and not on the part. Now I'm gonna define some node sets or some sets in order to define the boundary conditions later in the model. So I'm just gonna create the left wall. I'm gonna select these two edges. So now with shift, I can select both edges, both left edges, and now that's gonna be my edge where I'm gonna define a boundary condition later. I'm gonna do the same thing for the right wall. So again, holding shift, I'm gonna select those two edges that define the right wall. And now the X band, the X symmetry condition, because we are only gonna model the upper half of the model, is gonna be that region in there. So that region is gonna have a symmetry uh, boundary condition, and for that we are gonna have to define a node set in which we are gonna apply a boundary condition later. I'm just gonna call that one X sim boundary condition. And again, holding shift, I'm gonna select the three edges. And I click done. Those are the three but no, uh, sets in which we are, I'm gonna define the boundary conditions later. Now, on the engineering features, I'm gonna define the crack. And the crack is gonna be using a contour integral so that's the J integral that is being programmed inside Abacus. And the first thing that is gonna ask me is for to select the crack front. I'm just gonna select that crack front, which is the crack tip, as we can see here in the schematic of the example, that that's the crack front sitting in the middle of the that lower edge. And I have to specify the crack extension uh, direction. I'm gonna use a Q vector, and my initial point is gonna be that one, and the end point of the Q vector is gonna be that one. I can see that I created that vector and it's specifying that it's growing the crack in that X direction towards the right. I'm gonna select the symmetry plane because I'm only modeling half of the model as explained before. So I have to specify that I'm doing that in order uh, for the J integral computations. And I'm gonna use X special crack tip elements. So it's gonna have a quarter point element and it's gonna be collapse element side. That's in order to recreate the stress singularity that is happening at the crack tip. So with that, I just define the crack in my model. And then I have to select the step, which is like the problem type, type that I'm running here in Abacus. So it's gonna be an static genital. And now I created the step. Now, as I created a crack, I need to see what are the outputs associated to that crack are. So I'm just gonna create a history output request. I'm gonna double click that. I'm just gonna call that crack output. So it's gonna be the outputs that are associated with the crack. So it's gonna be, the domain is gonna be the crack. The crack is named crack one and the number of contours for the J-integral computation that I selected here is 10. And after that, following the steps in the tree, I'm gonna define the loads and the boundary conditions. First, I'm gonna define the boundary conditions, which are displacement. And the first one is gonna be the left wall. So I could have defined the nodes, the sets in which I'm gonna apply the boundary conditions here, but remember that we defined those previously. So I'm just gonna select sets and I'm gonna apply the boundary condition in the left wall set that I created before. Because it's a Y symmetry boundary condition, I'm gonna restrict the movement in the X axis. So that goes with the degrees of freedom number one. So I'm just gonna put a zero in there and it created rollers in that left wall. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the right wall Again, in the X axis, it's gonna be restricted the movement. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the symmetry with respect to the X axis that is sitting right next to the crack. 
and for that one the movement is going to be now restricted in the y-axis so that creates those rollers in that in those edges okay then I'm going to apply a load I'm going to do it using a surface traction that is going to be here in this edge and it's not going to be a shear actually you know what is easier if we do it using a pressure so I'm just going to cancel that and I'm going to apply uh, the load as a pressure <coughs> so I'm going to apply the load in that surface and because it's a pressure I have to define it as negative one remember that is one megapascal that's our base units and the negative means that we are pulling instead of applying pressure to the part as we can see here that the now, now the part is under traction and the magnitude of that load remember that is one megapascal then I'm gonna create my job double click and the job name is gonna be called fracture analysis and I just created the job which is not ready to submit yet because we have not defined the mesh in our uh, part so I'm just gonna go here to mesh and the first thing that I'm gonna do is to define the element type so we are gonna assign the element type to my part and it's gonna be a quadratic plane strain without reduced integration uh, element so it's gonna be an A noted B quadratic plane strain quadrilateral so those are the elements that are gonna be here in my part that's the element type then I'm gonna assign some special meshing techniques for this rosette region because of the singularity at the crack tip I'm gonna need some special element types in there and with quad dominated I'm gonna select sweep so that's gonna create a collapse element in that region now for the rest of the regions I'm just gonna select quadrat elements and for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not going to explain the meshing algorithms. I'm just going to go ahead and go with advancing front. Then I'm going to define the size or like the resolution of my mesh. So that's going to create like some global partition for my entire part. So let's see what that does. So that means that the mesh is going to be... the Meshing algorithm is going to be using those partitions in the edges in order to start the mesh. We can go smaller, like the approximate global size is 8, or maybe 4, and we can see that how that changes the resolution in my mesh. I'm just going to go ahead and use an 8 in here. And for this region, we need a better resolution because that's where it the action is happening so we need a finer mesh resolution in there so I'm just gonna apply, uh, apply an edge seating for these four radial edges and I'm not gonna do it by size but I'm gonna do it by number so right now we have a total of one two three four five uh, elements I'm just gonna apply double that and I'm gonna have ten partitions for each one of those edges so that's gonna create a finer mesh resolution in that zone where the crack tip is I'm gonna click OK and now my part is ready to mesh so I'm just gonna go ahead and mesh the part I'm gonna hit OK and this is the mesh that we just created you can see that we have a finer resolution surrounding the crack tip and with the special collapse elements. Now I have to check if the mesh is quadrilateral so I'm just gonna query the entire assembly and we can see that we have a total of 557 elements and all of them are quadrilateral so that means that our simulation 
is ready to go. Sometimes Abacus has problems if not all the elements are the same type. So I'm just gonna right click here in my job. I'm gonna submit the analysis. Now the analysis have been has been submitted. The simulation is running. And it's completed. So we right click and results. I can go ahead and plot the deformed shape. So now we see the font misses stresses that are super high in the crack tip because that's where the all the stress concentration is happening. I can also plot the displacement, the magnitude of the displacement, the x displacement or the y displacements. And that's the magnitude of the displacements. Blue is zero and red is the higher displacement. And for the J integral, I'm just gonna go to results, history output, because remember that we created a history output for the crack. And I'm gonna select the J integral results. We shift, I'm gonna select them all, I'm gonna plot it. So we can see that we have 10 answers. The first one is for the first integration contour, which is not very accurate. But we can see that as the contour increases, our solution starts converging and it gets to an approximate solution of 0.90817 to the negative 3. So those are my results in order for the J integral. And if I want to report these J integral results to a text file, I'm just going to go to report xy because we have a plot I'm gonna select all the points that we we have in the plot and under the setup tab I'm gonna assign the name to it which is j integral results that txt I want nine significant figures in my text file and I'm gonna click OK now if I go to my folder, to my working directory, I can see that I have a text file with the J integral results. I'm gonna open that file, and we can see the J integral for each one of the contours that I asked in the when I defined the crack. So I defined a number of 10 contours, and now I have 10 J integral results, once for each contour. We can see that as the solution or the number of contour increases, our solution converges to one value. So that's it for the tutorial and I'm gonna see you a next time.